need a doctor? I am a doctor. I should have died years ago. People all over the world have my disease. I'm here. To find a cure. We have to push the boundaries, take the risks. If you're gonna run, do it now. Dr. Michael Morbius, you've been missing for two months. When you're a stranger, then you were found on a container ship that washed up off a of Long Island. Faces look ugly when you're alone. Johnny! What did you do to yourself, Doctor? I wish I knew. I went from dying to being more alive than ever. It worked. Not exactly. I have increased strength and speed and some form of bat radar. What else can I do? There are limits. There has to be. There's something inside of me. The hunt and consume blood. Michael. When you're strange, can you control it? I don't know. Half the city wants to kill you. We haven't had anything this good since that thing in San Francisco. The other half wants to control you. Hey, uh, Dr. Mike, you and I should stay in touch. I'd do anything to save a life. But I don't know what I'm capable of. You save lives, you don't take them. Are you here to heal the world? Or to destroy it? Welcome back, everyone. This will be my new Morbius trailer video. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs here for a bunch of different Spider-Man franchises. Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man because of the Oscorp logo, and Spider-Man No Way Home, as well as Venom Let There Be Carnage. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Obviously, we have a lot of Spider-Man No Way Home stuff coming up really soon, too. Sort of explaining how they're all bringing this together. Although, if you've seen Venom Let There Be Carnage, it kind of explains how the Earth that Morbius comes from, now pretty much confirmed to be the same Earth that Venom comes from, connects to Spider-Man No Way Home in the Marvel MCU multiverse. But it is crazy here. We have him referring to himself as Venom. Like he says, I am Venom, literally in the trailer. You have the Andrew Garfield Amazing Spider-Man Oscorp logo, the same Tobey Maguire Daily Bugle logo, but the murder plot points from Tom Holland's Spider-Man No Way Home. It's almost like the Sony and the Marvel people have turned into the WandaVision meme trying to connect all these dots. I already talked about all the Easter eggs here, but the extra Easter eggs that they include on this version of the Daily Bugle with the logo from the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies are Rhino and Black Cat Easter eggs. Like, is the Black Cat going to show up during this movie? Is the Rhino going to show up during this movie? Sony is developing a spin-off movie for the Black Cat character. I don't know when we're going to see that, but I believe that's what those Easter eggs are meant to tease. As for Rhino, I have no idea what they're going to do with that character or which version it would be. Because the last time we saw the Rhino, it was really, really silly. I have a hard time believing that they would bring that back unless they do a slightly different version. And now because of what we saw with all the crossover Easter eggs in Spider-Man No Way Home, Venom Let There Be Carnage post credit scene, the idea with the way they're using the multiverse, even though it's still kind of confusing with this Tobey Maguire Spider-Man logo in the Tom Holland Spider-Man murder plot points, it makes a little more sense. The Morbius movie is just taking place on an alternate Earth from MCU Tom Holland Spider-Man. The whole thing with Michael Keaton's vulture, he was in prison in the New York City area at the end of Spider-Man Homecoming, so I believe that's the connection they're trying to make during this film. Like, Morbius gets hauled into prison in the New York City area, and he winds up crossing paths with the vulture who's wearing the same white prison jumpsuit that he did during Spider-Man Homecoming. 
who himself talks about putting a crew together, just teasing future Sinister Six stuff, and then busting out of prison. I know a lot of people are wondering who the sixth member of the Sinister Six in Spider-Man No Way Home is going to be, because we have five confirmed members from the multiverse. Right now, I'm assuming that Vulture is probably the best candidate for that sixth member, but I don't know if he's actually in the movie. They might just reference him, because six extra villain characters is a lot to put in a single movie. They start with Morbius going to find the bat DNA that winds up giving him his powers. So the whole idea is that Morbius is called the living vampire in the comics because he's not undead. He doesn't get his powers by being bit by another vampire like Dracula or by being bit by a vampire bat. He winds up combining special bat DNA with electroshock therapy and that gives him his powers. So he doesn't die to get his powers. That's why he's not undead. And it's also why he can walk around during the day. They're playing him like an anti-hero, just like he is in the comics, just like they did during the Venom and Venom Let There Be Carnage movies with the Venom character. In typical fashion, like you'd expect him to do, J. Jonah Jameson on any Earth in any universe paints them as monsters, the same way he does with Spider-Man, but they're actually trying to help people and do good things. We haven't had anything this good since that thing in San Francisco. Even though during the trailer they talk about the event that happened in San Francisco, that's basically the events of Venom Let There Be Carnage that they're referencing. The Morbius movie mostly takes place in and around the New York City area. That's why you see the Oscorp building from the Andrew Garfield Amazing Spider-Man movies because Oscorp's headquarters is in New York City. The Horizon logo that you see on the High Rises 2, that's the biotech company where he works where he's developing this cure. Like he does not work for Oscorp himself. Oscorp figures in, I believe, through Tyrese's character. The weaponry and the technology that you see him using there to try and catch Morbius, he is a comic book character, the character that Tyrese is playing. I believe that tech comes from Oscorp, and that's the connection. Adria Ronha that you see here is playing Martine Bancroft, his love interest from the comics. Most of you probably recognize the music track that they're using during this trailer. It's the Doors, People Are Strange. The whole plot point with him on the boat killing all the sailors happens right after he gets his powers in the comics. It's a slightly different type of boat in the comics, but it's the same basic concept. He's out in the ocean when he gets his powers and loses control and winds up killing a bunch of people before he figures out what's going on. Like a regular vampire, he does need to drink blood in order to survive, but he doesn't possess any of the regular weaknesses that vampires have, like garlic, sunlight, crosses, holy water, anything like that. He is sensitive to light, like it will give him a bad sunburn, which is why you see him walking around in daylight with his hood on, but it won't kill him like it would kill a traditional vampire. So if you remember 84 years ago when they released the last trailer for this, they didn't have nearly as many special effects visual effects done. So they spent a lot more time showing his actual transformation when he's activating his powers, like his face transforms into the vampire form. Also the way they visualize him flying and using his sonar abilities. It actually looks pretty legit, even though obviously there was a lot of special effects during the Venom Let There Be Carnage movie because of the symbiotes. This trailer makes it seem like the Morbius movie is more special effects heavy than Venom Let There Be Carnage. Even though we were supposed to see this movie before we saw Venom Let There Be Carnage, I think the reason why they bumped this further out is because they wanted Venom Let There Be Carnage to come out so close to Spider-Man No Way Home because of the Venom Let There Be Carnage post credit scene. Careful for spoilers if you have not seen that. During that post credit scene, he winds up getting transported to the MCU Earth where he sees a broadcast of J. Jonah Jameson from the MCU yelling about Tom Holland Spider-Man with him on screen, like with his mask off, so you see that it's Tom Holland Spider-Man. We'll see if something similar winds up happening to the Morbius character, but I have a feeling the connection to Spider-Man No Way Home, the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies, will just be through the Michael Keaton Vulture character who says we should keep in touch. I believe that'll be their connection to Sinister Six stuff in the future, even though Morbius himself will not be a Sinister Six character. We see Tyrese's character interrogating him about what happened on the boat, like they found him after a couple of days with all these dead sailors. Tyrese is playing Simon Stroud from the Morbius comics. He was a CIA agent and an NYPD detective who just hunted down Morbius. I think the way Tyrese was trying to hype his character up, he would continue on in Morbius sequels, the same way that a lot of the Venom Let There Be Carnage characters came back from the first movie. I also love the way the Venom character just in general has become shorthand in the world that this takes place in because he stops the mugger literally saying Venom's catchphrase, I am Venom, before joking and taking it back, saying, no, 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 I'm Michael Morbius at your service. Like I said, the way that Sony is using all these different Easter eggs from the different Spider-Man movies, Tom Holland, Tommy Maguire, Andrew Garfield, is just like the WandaVision meme of just everything going crazy. Complicated even further because we know the Oscorp logo is from the Amazing Spider-Man movies, but they're using Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin from the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies during Spider-Man No Way Home. 
Like, does this mean we're also going to get the other version of Norman Osborn at some point during all these movies? When he's talking about his limitations, about how he needs to drink human blood, the way he talks about the darkness inside him that wants to hunt and feed is them just trying to connect him with the Venom character, like the Venom symbiote wants to hunt and feed, literally eat people's brains. There were a lot of theories early on about who Jared Harris was playing during this. I believe he's just playing one of his colleagues and longtime friends that winds up dying during his origin story in the early Morbius comics. I don't think he's playing like a really, really huge Sinister Six character or a secret character or anything like that. Matt Smith is playing Loxia's crown. He's probably going to be the main villain of the movie. He's one of the big villains from the Morbius comics who also turns into a similar type of vampire as Morbius. I believe the plot of this movie is him winding up getting his powers in Matt Smith's Loxia's crown character, also a scientist, trying to use that to nefarious ends, trying to give himself powers and then just going crazy. So I would say this movie shares more in common with Venom Let There Be Carnage than it does the first Venom movie. Like you have a villain who gains the same type of powers that the hero has and then tries to go nuts. Another connection to the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies, they have a very similar stairwell scene where he's flying up the stairwell using his powers the same way that Vulture, if you remember from way back in Spider-Man Homecoming, came down the stairway. Even though technically it's a different building, the way they film it makes it seem similar to that Vulture scene. It's from a hotel that's very common that shows up in a bunch of movies because of its unique architecture that's in the Atlanta area. And a lot of these movies film in Atlanta, which is why it shows up in a lot of movies. But if you spotted any other big Easter eggs or connections to the other Spider-Man movies, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield's Amazing Spider-Man movies, Tom Holland's Spider-Man No Way Home, just write them below in the comments. Even Venom Let There Be Carnage. The trailer says the movie is still scheduled to come out in January, so we won't have to wait that long after Spider-Man No Way Home to just find out exactly what's going on and how they're connecting this to everything. We'll get that next Spider-Man No Way Home trailer in the next couple of weeks. We're also going to have Disney Plus Day with a whole bunch of trailers for the Marvel Disney Plus series as well as the Star Wars Disney Plus series. So it is going to be like Trailer City during November. And because the Eternals movie is coming out this week, my full Eternals post credit scene and Easter eggs and breakdown videos for that movie will post later this week. So make sure to go see that movie when you have a chance. While you wait for everything, click here for my video on that first look at Green Goblin in Spider-Man No Way Home, and click here for my Venom Let There Be Carnage post credit scene video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.